everybody, it's Trish here, and today I'm going to walk you through the very easy steps to do your Google Classroom year-end cleanup. So the first thing we need to do is go to classroom.google.com. Once you're here, you're going to see all of your different classrooms that are currently active. And this is where we need to do a little bit of that cleanup. Now, the first thing we wanna make sure that we do is do not delete your classrooms. Do not delete your classrooms. We're actually gonna go through the process of returning the work to the students and then archiving it. Because once you have a classroom created with all those amazing assignments that you put so much hard work into, we wanna make sure that you can reuse those posts for next year. So what we're gonna first do is we're going to make sure that we've returned all of the work to our students in our Google Classrooms. When a student hands in an assignment in Google Classroom, it actually transfers ownership from their Google Drive to your Google Drive. And so we wanna make sure that we've returned those assignments so that they can still have access to that work later um, if they ever need it for a future project or assignment. So we're gonna do that by going into the actual classroom. Once I go into a particular classroom, I can see all of the different stream and the different assignments that I have. What I can do is on the left hand side, it'll talk about the work that is due. And so when I say view all, it's going to show me all of the assignments in one nice and easy place. And it's going to show me who's done, who's not done, what's been returned. And so this gives me a quick at a glance so I can go through and know, oh, I, I need to actually return um, some of these different assignments and transfer that ownership. So once I go in here, I can see I've got three done, 12 not done. This was just for a PD. Don't worry. This was a very good class. And what I can do is I can select all of my students and I can return that work. And uh, that way it transfers the ownership all in one nice, great big batch. Now, most of the time, you're probably doing this as you go throughout the term and throughout the year. You have an assignment, you're making sure you're reviewing it, but it's just good to do that double check that you have returned all of those assignments. But now that that's done and we're ready to do the classroom cleanup, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our classes and you can do that by just getting to the classroom main menu by clicking what we like to call the pancake stack in the top left hand corner and you'll see all of your different classes. When I'm ready to archive, I'm simply going to click the three dots to the right hand side of the title and I'm going to say archive. What this will do is it'll stop any interaction in the classroom. Kids can no longer post, they can no longer comment, there's, there's no back and forth available, but the assignments stay. And even if you archive it, the files remain in Google Drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and archive that and I can see it's off my list. So I would continue to archive um, anything I want. If you wanna find your archived classrooms, you simply do the class main menu again. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you actually see one that says archive classes. When you go here, you can see everything that's been archived. Now, this is just a little point. If you were wanting to permanently delete something, meaning you never want that classroom again and you never want those assignments inside that classroom again, you permanently delete from the archive section. But again, do not delete your classrooms um, unless you are sure you never want to reuse anything that's inside of those classrooms again, because that's going to be a super teacher lifesaver and time saver. So when you're inside of here, if you did want to permanently delete something, maybe it was just a practice, um, what you can do is click those three dots again and now you'll see a delete button. Now, what we're going to do is we're actually not ever going to restore this classroom or use this classroom again. The best part about Google Classroom is I don't need to put kids in and then take kids out and delete assignments and repost things. We are simply going to make a brand new classroom. We're going to pretend it's it's September or August of next year and we want to start those classrooms and I'm going to reuse the post. So when I'm in here, I go back to my, my classes, I'm ready to start a new class for next year. So I can call this my you know 2018-2019 um, classroom. Obviously I would have a better name because this would be for my science class or my English class or whatever it is that I'm doing. But once I create that classroom, what's really fantastic is in just a couple of seconds, it'll be made and I can start reusing posts. So now, once again, I'm going to invite new students by clicking that students tab and I can see that class code on the left hand side and I will display that code for my students to join. No need for me to type all of those names. And now I can start putting assignments in the stream. And I'm going to do that very simply by simply clicking the plus button in the bottom right hand corner. 
and I'm going to see reuse post. What's fantastic about this is it allows me to select any classroom from, including archived. They're all listed here, unless you permanently delete them. So now I can pick that and I can say, oh, we're gonna do some really good Google search math, reuse, and these are not laminated lesson plans. I will have the opportunity to actually go through. I can still adjust the title and the instructions. I can still adjust templates, add more things for my drive or YouTube or links, and I can go ahead and assign. And of course I can schedule. So that's how simple that is. It really is a super teacher time saver being able to archive and simply reuse a post so that you're up and running for that first day with ease. So give it a try. That's the basics for your Google Classroom year-end cleanup. There's gonna be two more videos following this if you like to stay hyper-organized. One's gonna show you how to clean up the calendar because with every Google Classroom, you get a Google Calendar. And then the third video is how do you clean up the Google Drive now that we've archived that classroom too. So stay tuned for those two other videos and good luck cleaning up your classrooms. If you have any questions, please just email Trish and I'll help you out.